Hit it with checking out back rooms damage control. Let's dive right on in. Someone. So we have. So there's these other people here. It's very creepy. Still running, still on the run. Damn, bro. Like, run, run, forest, run. I was gonna say, run, bitch, run, but whatever. Yeah, they're not gonna make it. Meeting right now. Clouds should not have happened. Not here. What do you mean it should not? not. It shouldn't have happened. What occurred was a gross misunderstanding that was the result of some severe information mismanagement. Even now, I believe most of you still have an incomplete idea of what took place last night. Uh, so, uh, before I fill you in, I need to address the fact that there has been information deliberately withheld from many of you on the project. Uh, now, these choices were not made lightly and were done for only the best of reasons. Okay. However, I want to make it abundantly clear that following the events of last night, it has been proven to us that that method of conducting ourselves was not viable. Hmm. So, I'm coming to you now to correct this mistake and begin delivering the authentic order of events as we understand them. On the morning of March 1st, a team of four researchers was sent into the complex to conduct their routine layout analysis. George Levy, Marvin Lee, Ronald McCarthy, and Peter Tench. At around 12.25 p.m., the group realized that they had lost track of Tench while traversing a previously accessed branch of hallways. Mm. As you'll recall, this prompted an immediate withdrawal of response back to standard, followed by several days of significant search efforts. However, uh, those ultimately yielded nothing, and as far as any of us were concerned, Tenji had simply vanished, leaving no physical trace. Damn, so 
They're now, probably hidden or like, or he was took by to the, the so metal monster or whatever. His disappearance, our security team was forced to put together a more acceptable cause of death that would keep attention away from this institute and provide closure to the family. Mm. Uh, so that is all close to common knowledge, I presume. Not all of you were with us at the time of the incident. However, you're certainly aware of the effects it has had on our internal procedures over the past few months. Regardless, that was where Tensha's involvement in this came to an end. Or, at least, that's what we assumed. Because on May 8th, at approximately 5.30 p.m., a motion alert was sent out from the complex, which was closed off at the time. One of our senior engineers was sent down to assess the situation and discovered a male dressed in hazard gear who we were able All right. to identify as... Peter oh, that Tench. one red room. Immediately following this discovery, Tench was moved to a secure room on this floor where, over the following days, a select group of doctors were able to administer a panel of tests in order to determine what had happened to Peter in the two months he'd been gone. Uh, those tests yielded very little useful information. By all measures, Peter appeared to be in excellent health. However, we were still provided one very useful tool in understanding uh, how the situation unfolded from his perspective. Some of you may recall that on the day of his disappearance, Tench was his team's designated camera operator. All right. Well, when we recovered him, he still had that camera in his possession. And in fact, had documented Okay, the what's with the review. camera? The footage will be presented in its entirety later today. However, for the purpose of this discussion, I will only be highlighting key events. This is the hallway where Peter was last seen. They're not okay. in but you can hear the others walking behind him. Now, as he approaches the branch on the right here, pay close attention to the audio. Yeah, mm -hmm. you hear this? They're gone. Now, I'd like to save the discussion for afterwards, but what you just saw is what we believe to be the moment that Peter was instantaneously transported two months forward in time. Wait, forward in time? Following that abrupt flash you just saw, Tench proceeds back out into the hallway in search of his team, but it is without any indication of the presence. The next 30 or so minutes of the tape uh, follow a fairly panicked attention as the test he navigate his way back to the thresholds. He does the original back rooms. Back. However, the threshold appears not as he knows it, but as it appeared on the date of May 8th. And this ties us back yeah, to the, the red room, room as well. So, uh, to summarize, from his point of view, he had only been inside the complex for several hours. Uh, so to him, all of the new developments surrounding the threshold were completely foreign. Uh, luckily, though, as I already mentioned, there were people available to manage the situation as it unfolded. And over the course of the following days, we were able, we, able to uh, properly sit down with Peter and work with him to gain a collective understanding of what had happened. All right. However, there was still the very significant fact that Mr. Tench was considered legally deceased as a result of the cover story, and reversing that would be no easy feat. He understood this and was willing to cooperate while we looked for a way to reintegrate him without raising suspicion. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, that process ended up taking quite a bit longer than we had anticipated. Yeah. And all the while, Peter was sucked out here, waiting our going by. We did our best to keep him engaged, but it is hard to combat the effects of cruel and sensory deprivation on the human brain. And as a result, Peter's mental state took a toll. Not to a degree that was outright concerning at first, okay. but around the end of week two. Oh, we the 1990s, okay. A number of behaviors common in patients diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Though we don't have reason to believe that Mr. Tench was afflicted with that condition. Whatever the case, well, he didn't express it outright. From what we could gather, he appeared to have 
deluded himself into believing that he was still inside some sort of illusion created by the complex mm -hmm. and that we were secretly looking to do him harm. This all came to a head on the night of the 22nd when while Tench was finally about to be transferred to a temporary above ground residence, he broke away from us and using stolen credentials forced his way back into the complex where he would go undiscovered until just last night when he ambushed right. and violently attacked Team B in room 14C, leaving Dr. Bloom in critical condition. Okay, all right. We can presume that during the two or so days Tent spent in the complex, he met Dorothy the idea that he could somehow escape through an alternate threshold, but still held on to the belief that all of us here were working to trap him in some way, despite our actions saying exactly the opposite. Immediately after firing a single shot from the Reddington uh -huh. 870 to Dr. Bloom's side, Tench fled the scene and headed to the threshold outpost, where he would turn the weapon on several more of you while progressing to standard and through the lower offices. Given the abrupt okay. and chaotic nature of the unfolding situation, it took our security team several moments longer than you ideally should have to figure out what was happening. But thankfully, while Tench was passing through one of the empty labs next to storage, Dr. Maxwell was able to act quickly and managed to disarm him, accidentally discharging the weapon into the ceiling in the process, though. However, Tench still managed to avoid apprehension, fleeing into the maintenance wing and evading our security staff by taking a freight elevator to the surface. All right, okay. Now, so this they're in the elevator now. Have played out very badly given the potential number of witnesses around the building at the time. But luckily for everyone involved, as far as we can tell, Tench was not noticed as he exited the property. Around five minutes later, our security team made it to the ground floor and began a thorough sweep in the direction of the hillside where cameras had last observed Tench. Now, what now? There's no easy way to say this other than to just say it. I am terribly sorry to inform you all, but Mr. Tench was found deceased halfway down the hillside. Damn. The result of an extreme blow to the head. It appears that while he was running through some brush, he failed to anticipate a sudden dip in the ground and tragically fell Dude forward is dead into a large man. rock. Dude's a dead man, that's Given it. Given the circumstances, it was not something any of us could have anticipated or prevented. Mm. The tragedy of the entire situation undoubtedly remains, but Dr. Tench, if regardless the of how right, powerful he was sail. in his final days, was Away. a really man who gave his all to this project. Tench. He would certainly not want us hindering it in his name. What we're doing here is so much bigger than any one person. It is the work of a unified effort, and we need to ensure that that is never lost sight of. That we hold on to the pre-established notion that Peter is and has been deceased. That is done, and there yeah. is nothing more to be extracted. Oh, a phone call. Pick up the phone, motherfucker. Pick it up. Pick up the phone. It's zooming in. Hello? Hello? <laughs> God damn. Will someone pick up the fucking phone? Hey guys, click on this video. You'll enjoy it. I swear. 